Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to take a look at doing a basic terrain shader in Godot 4. Godot doesn't have any built-in features for terrain building or texture painting. Um, other engines like Unreal Engine do, and these are pretty common workflows. It's a pretty important thing you'll wanna to try to implement for uh, open world games or even smaller level-based games. You both, both of them need this kind of level design. I will point you to an add-on uh, for Godot called Terrain 3D. I'd encourage you to go check it out. I've used it a bit myself and it's really impressive. They have some nice tools for texture painting and building out that landscape. It's still an open source project, of course, and it's under development, but please take a look at that. Um, what I want to show today is how to build a terrain manually. I think more than anything, it's gonna be a learning exercise, but you're probably gonna learn something or pick up some skills along the way. So what are we gonna do? Quick outline. We're gonna use Blender to create a terrain map and use Blender's sculpting tool to create that terrain. Um, then we're going to do some texture painting in Blender to mix two different PBR materials. I'm gonna do a grass and a rock material onto the terrain. After that, we're going to have to look a little bit at channel packing the images um, to extract the texture maps that we actually want for the terrain into Godot. Then finally, we're going to take a look at the shader that we need to make in Godot to make this work. To follow along, you're going to need to have Blender, Godot 4, and GIMP. Um, so you might go through this whole process and find that it's too cumbersome for your needs. In that case, I would definitely point you to that Terrain 3D add-on. But if you just need a small scale terrain that you don't mind hand painting, then this might be perfect for you. All right, let's jump into it. So obviously the first step is to delete the default cube and then re-add it, of course. Um, so actually the default cube is going to be useful here because we need something for scale. Um, this cube, hit N key, you're gonna see it's two meters by two meters by two meters. So that's kind of a useful um, guidepost to actually see how big your landscapes should be. So next, let's drop in a plane and we're gonna scale it up. I'm gonna do scale times 100. Uh, maybe even that's not quite big enough. Let's do scale it up a little more. So what we wanna do is we're gonna subdivide this plane and then we're gonna start sculpting on it. Um, so lots of different ways to subdivide in Blender, but I'm just going to take the simple approach, um, call the subdivide in edit mode. This lets you do up to 10 subdivisions. So obviously, um, these subdivisions are too big. Like you won't have any features that are the size of a, a character. So subdivide, there we go. So that's pretty close. We might even go one more. Um, so that's, that'll probably be enough subdivisions to give us the features we want. And another thing we should do is just check our count on the vertices. So right now we're at 8,000. Actually, let's go even higher. We can, we can do more. Um, so 20, 20,000 triangles is not insane for, uh, for a level. Okay. So here is our, um, our plane and sorry, I didn't want to delete. I'm going to hide this. And then of course, next step is we just jump into the sculpt. So once you're in the sculpting workspace, um, the first thing we should actually do is make sure that our, our object scale is all set. Um, so you could press control A and apply rotation and scale. Another thing you're gonna notice is that we're clipping the far plane, uh, the Z plane here, um, because the, this is a scale much bigger than what we normally use Blender for. So if you go to view, and you see the clip end distance is set to 1,000 meters, you can just up that to say 2,000 meters and you should be fine. You may have to do the same thing in other workspaces. Um, so we'll be doing this a couple times. All right, but once you're in here, you can just basically go to town on your uh, sculpting tools. One thing just before I start, we're gonna take a look. The UV map is already perfect because we just subdivided a plane. So we're gonna leave the UV map as is. Um, I will talk about that a bit later. If the UV map is not exactly to your liking, then you can actually remesh and re-UV it, um, which might be a bit better. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna try to make a little a mountainous region over here. And right now I'm just using the draw tool. Um, you'll see it kind of it makes everything really lumpy, 
which is not great for a sort of mountainous region, but it kind of gets the, the base shape going. You can hold shift to, to flatten out areas and then build them up again. Um, yeah, so then let's just work through this. Probably what you want to do is use the crease tool in order to, to kind of sharpen up these cliff faces um, because a lot, this is just, you know, very lumpy looking. We want this to be a little more sharp. And the other thing we can do is go shade smooth. That'll help a little bit. There's an interesting thing that can happen with the plane and the UVs, obviously, because the UVs have been, you know, we start with a plane and now we've got this stretched object. This might not look that great. So you may actually want to unwrap it um, if that works better or looks better for you. The other option you have is to remesh the whole thing. So there's a bunch of options in Blender to do that. But if you remesh it, it's going to somewhat equalize the, the face sizes. Um, and particularly, you might see some skewing here, here on these sharp face edges. So the next thing we really need is a material on this to actually do some texture painting. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new material and then come into the shader view. So what we need really is we're going to have two principal BSDFs. They're both going to be PBR materials. So I, I've already picked out two PBR materials. I think I used Ambient CG for these materials, but um, another thing you want here is Node Wrangler. So if you click on your first material and just click Control Shift T, we can we can find our materials really easy here. So let's find the, the grass material first, and we're going to use the color, the roughness, and the normal GL. Um, and it's going to be important to use the GL because that's what Godot um, wants as well. So we'll do principal texture setup. Like the scaling of this is not what we want. So what we want to do here is we're going to introduce a value and we're going to hook it up to the scale. I'm going to set it to maybe 10. We'll start with this and you can see from a distance, you're going to see tiling. But of course, when you're up close, um, with the terrain, it's going to look a lot better. So let's go ahead and get the other material set up. If I click on the other material, press Control Shift T. Let's find our rock material, and we're going to do color, roughness, and normal GL. Same thing. I'm going to kind of move this so it's not overlapping too much. So now the big question, we have these two materials. How do you combine them? Well, we're going to use something I call a blend map, which is just another image texture we can drop in here. And we're going to hit new. It doesn't need to be huge. So a 1K resolution is fine, actually. Um, we'll just call it blend map. And we'll start with a value, a black value. We'll clear the alpha. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a mix shader. So a mix shader with the color of the blend map being the factor. So whatever the top one is, it's going to be the grass. Um, in this case, it's the grass. But with a black value, that's going to be your base surface. Once we hook up the rock shader to it, um, we're still not going to see any rock. But what we can do now is we can texture paint on top. We're also going to need a value for the rock UV. So we'll put the value of 10 into the scale. And we might want to play with those numbers later. I'm going to show the shader in a bit more detail. I'm going to take a few seconds just to pan through it. So if you want to pause at any point and recreate it, you can go ahead and do that. So 
So with the shader complete and our basic terrain map, the next thing we get to do is texture paint. So if we go over to the texture painting panel, the first view, it's going to look really ugly. It's going to show you the actual um, blend map image that we created. Really what we actually want to do here is go into a viewport shading. So as we paint on the white, we'll be able to see the rock. But just to show you right away, this is what happens when you paint directly onto it. Um, so what I'll do is for the areas that I know are 100% rock, I'm just going to go ahead and paint these in. So what we can do to blend in the areas between the rock and the grass is we can use a texture mask. So let's go ahead and click texture mask under your brush settings. I'm going to make a new one. If you hit this button here, then you can, uh, you can modify that texture. So we're just going to use the clouds. We're going to set it to hard and we might increase the size a little bit. And you can see when you press the F key to change your brush size, you're going to see that pattern um, coming through there. I had to actually remove the texture from the texture field. I didn't intend to put it here, but it seemed to show up there. And once you remove it from your texture field, you're just left with the mask. And that'll allow us to kind of paint in the, the rock here. And you can play with your strength. You can play with your brush size. Basically, whatever is going to give you a, a good result when you try to paint this in. So once you're done blending in those edges and you're happy with it, um, another thing we can kind of notice here is that the repeating pattern on the grass is not super pretty to look at. So one technique for kind of breaking this up is you can come in with a, a texture mask, same as before, on your brush, and we can kind of just create some of that rock texture on top of the grass just to break up some of these patterns. So I'm reasonably happy with this. Um, the next step we got to look at is actually packing these textures so that uh, Godot can kind of process them with the, the shader that I've created. So I'm just going to walk through that quickly. So if you open up GIMP, all we're really going to do here is we're going to bring in our image. Um, we're going to pack the red, green, and blue of the albedo um, as they are. And then the alpha channel is going to be the roughness. And then the normal image just stays as it is. We're just going to bring that in directly. So all I normally do here is I take the image, I copy it, and I paste it right into GIMP. So you can do that directly. Then you go Colors, Components, Decompose. And the default settings should work. Basically, we're just going to split up the RGB into layers. After that, we're going to add a new layer, which we can also paste in. 
So if we open up our roughness texture, copy and hit paste, we get a floating layer, then set it at the bottom and we'll call it roughness. Once all that's done, you just go to colors, components, compose, and then we're gonna get an option here. So select RGBA and you should see red, green, blue. These should be in the right order. And then alpha is gonna be roughness. So once we press OK, it's going to pack all these together. Then we can go ahead and export. So when you get into the export dialog, I would recommend exporting right into your Godot project. That way it's going to come right into your engine. What you can do is you can select file by type, and we're going to do a DDS image export. So once you press export, you're going to want to use these settings. So compression, set it to DXT5, and then we're going to generate mitmaps. Then when you press export, you're done. The only other thing you have to do is we're going to copy our normal GL image um, directly into that folder. And so these these two images are what you need for that. Um, I think I pasted it into rock here, but this is actually the grass texture. So let me rename this. So once you have the RGB packed with the roughness and the normal, these are the two textures you need. So basically you repeat that process with the other texture, the rock texture. And once you have both of those, your textures are packed and we're ready to basically export the mesh. The next step is to take our mesh and export it and then bring it into the game engine. With the materials as they are, this is not gonna make any sense to the game engine. So what I would suggest doing actually is going to your materials, make a new material, and we're going to just tie the blend image to it. So under shading, find that material. And then we're just going to copy the blend map right into this other material. It's going to look a little funny, but what this allows us to do, once you have the blend map tagged onto this, we can basically just import this into Godot and it's going to bring our blend map in for us. So what we'll do is we will hit File, Export, GLTF, and then come into your Godot project. I did another video, uh, I'll put the link down below, on what presets you should use for exporting GLTF into Godot. But once you get that preset set up, it's as easy as just hitting the dropdown, and then hit Export GLTF. On the game engine side, you should see a couple things. You should be able to see the GLTF file that you exported along with that blend map. And then under your textures, you should see the, the textures that you created. So I'm just going to delete grass too. I had created these before. So these are the same. Um, grass and rock textures, you should have an albedo and rough file as well as a normal map for both of them. So once both of those steps are done, you just take your GLTF file, drag it into your scene. So we're going to go ahead and click Make Local here. And then what we can do is we can override the material on the plane. We're going to make a new shader material. So once you hit New Shader Material, you should see this drop down. So once that's done, we just come over here under Shader and we hit Load. So it's Blend Textures .gd Shader. And we can go ahead and save this material as well. OK, so once your material is saved, you can go under Shader Parameters. And you can see here's where we have to drag everything in. So it's pretty easy. Now that we have our textures brought in, we just take our Albedo Rough. And we're going to drop this into Albedo Rough 1. Find your Albedo Roughness on the rock. Put that into Rough 2. We'll use Normal 1 is going to be for the grass. Normal 2 is for the rock. And then finally, the blend map, which came over with our GLTF file. So you can see right out of the box, it looks decent. But there's some stuff we can uh, play with to make it look better. First of all, is you probably want a little bit of metallic on the rock for sure. Um, because rocks tend to have be a little shiny. And then you want a specular on both. So you can just hard code these uh, values to increase that brightness. The next thing we want to do is we need to actually walk through the level and see if the scale makes sense. So come over to the mesh and 
you hit the drop down here and create tri mesh static body. So that should be pretty fast. It's just going to make a collision that wraps around the whole body. Once that's done, we can hit play. So right away, I can see that grass is way, way, way too large. The rock is probably okay. I don't see any major issues with the rock. And yeah, so let's make that adjustment. So the way you can do that is you come over here and see these UV factors. You want to increase it to, to make it smaller because it's basically multiplying that uh, UV texture coordinate. So let's, I change that to 15. Let's see what that looks like. It's a bit better. I might even want to go a little smaller. So I'm going to do maybe 17. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that uh, result. Um, the metallic-iness of the rock is probably way too high, um, but those are those are parameters you can play with and uh, and tune. So the only other thing I want to mention here is about using multiple textures. So maybe if you want a third texture, I think you should just be able to use another blend map, and then you add more parameters to that shader. And then you're going to have to do some mixing with alphas in the shader. Um, I might do another video maybe showing how to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I think I'm okay with uh, with this setup. If if people really want it, I'll probably do it. So yeah, that's what I've got for terrain maps using Blender and Godot. I hope this was helpful for you. And thanks for watching.